Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and these are some Friends to Lovers romance books. If y'all didn't know, Friends to Lovers is my favorite trope. Don't get me wrong, I love enemies to lovers, hate to love, whatever you want to call it, but somehow Friends to Lovers is just like better to me. <laughs> I think it's just because I appeal to it more, you know? Like, I'd much rather have, like, a friends to lovers romance instead of a hate to love romance. Personally, in real life, like, for me, it just appeals more to me. I actually have a part one for this video. I will link it down below, filled with more friends to lovers romances. I made it, I want to say, over a year ago. Like, right when COVID hit, I want to say. And so it's been a very long time since I've made a friends to lovers trope video. And I have 10 more recommendations for you, so let's get started. First, I wanna talk about Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is a romance between Zenny and Mason. So Zenny has this very wealthy aunt, and when her aunt passes away, she ends up giving basically almost all of her money, all of her possessions to Zenny. But some of it also goes to this guy named Mason. Mason lived in the same town as Zenny's aunt, and they kind of became like companions and friends, and so she decides to give some of her money away to him as well. However, they cannot get their money that they inherited unless they get married to one another per her aunt's instructions in the will. <laughs> so this is a marriage of convenience as well as a friends to lovers. We read about them becoming friends, having to get married to one another. Well, first it's getting married and then they become friends in order to get their inheritance to get the money that they want. And oh, you get to see the friendship grow in here. And then it turns, it turns a little hot. <laughs> I just love Rebecca Weatherspoon's writing and I definitely want to read more of her books just like I really believed this friendship here. You also have a bunch of other representation in this book. Um, I believe both characters in here are bisexual as well. Both characters are a little curvier and a little bigger so it's just a great book all around. I then want to talk about two books a part of the Brown Sisters series. First is Take a Hint Danny Brown of course. This is all about Danny and Zaff and they both work at a university. She is a professor and he is the security guard for the building that she teaches in. So they've been friends for a while now. Um, he always brings her like a little snack because she always forgets to eat in the morning and they just have friendly conversation. And then one day there is like an elevator drill or something like that, or like a fire drill. And she is stuck in the elevator when the fire drill happens and the elevator gets stuck. Zaf realizes this and then goes to rescue her from the elevator and he carries her out of the building like this basically um like on the cover people take videos of it take pictures and they kind of go viral online and they decide to fake date in order to benefit zaf because he owns a non-profit organization i believe for um i forget specifically what it is but it's for boys in sports and it has to do i think it has something to do with like their emotions and stuff and like harnessing boys emotions like it's okay to have emotions and sports and everything i don't really remember exactly what it is um but it involves kind of around that anyway he owns a non-profit organization and in order to gain more popularity and for it to gain more traction they decide to fake date because their relationship is very um is a big hot topic at the moment <laughs> through them like having to fake this relationship they actually become really 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 close friends even closer than they were beforehand and then that just like sparks the fire between the two of them at whole it's good it is good. That also leads me into the third book in the series, which is Act Your Age Eve Brown. This one is my favorite in the series. <laughs> oh my gosh. This one is more like a uh, dislike to friends, to lovers in here. Jacob does not like Eve when they first meet. Eve comes into his bed and breakfast one day in search of a job because um, they're trying to find a chef for Jacob's bed and breakfast, but he does not like Eve the first moment that he sees her because she doesn't have a resume with her. She was not prepared because uh, she just drove by their bed and breakfast, saw, saw an help wanted sign, interview sign, and she's like, okay, let's go in. <laughs> she was not prepared at all. She has strange colored hair. She has weird sayings on her shirt. Like, he's just not, he's just, he's a very prickly person in general. He only likes like two people in his life, and so he does not like Eve whenever they first meet. And then after the interview, she may or may not accidentally hit, um, him with her car and has to take care of him and the bed and breakfast while he is bedridden and of course that just sparks more hatred he has of her um because she ran over him with her car but through them having to share a space together because she has to like stay in close proximity to take care of him they end up becoming amazing amazing friends i love the growth of friendship in this one. Oh. It is so beautiful. And then when you finally get to see it, like get to see it grow into something more, it is just 
so good. These two are beautiful. This is my favorite book of the year. So like, that's saying something. That's saying something of how good this Friends to Lovers romance was. Next we have another favorite of mine. We have That Kind of Guy by Talia Hebert. This is about Ray and Zach and they have been friends for a little bit at the beginning of this book um, and then you get to see their friendship kind of like grow even more. The more they spend time together the more their friendship grows. Ray is actually an older woman in here and Zach is just realizing his sexuality. He's realizing that he is demisexual um, and so that plays a little bit of a part in this book as well. Our heroine in here, Ray, also has my chronic illness pots and so that kind of plays a role in here too and so the two of them are really close friends at the beginning of this book it like grows in more friendship and then um ray needs a date to this event writer's event because she's a writer writer's event and zach decides to be her like fake date fake boyfriend because she knows her ex-husband is going to be there and so he's like i'll be your fake boyfriend for this and then we'll like basically get back at him for being such a scumbag. Through them like having to go to this event, it forces them to realize the feelings that they have for one another because Ray definitely doesn't want to push her feelings onto Zach. He confided in her about his, his sexuality. I don't think he confided in anybody else at that point, like how he was feeling about who he's attracted to. And so Ray is just like infatuated with him, but she doesn't want to pressure him at all. And so she doesn't reveal her feelings for him. And then Zach is slowly starting to realize that He's probably in love with this woman. <laughs> this is just so great. Another Talia Hibbert book that's just amazing. Talia Hibbert can do no wrong in my eyes. I then want to talk about Marriage on Madison Avenue by Lauren Lane. This is another fake dating or fake engagement romance between Audrey and Clark. This book also takes place in New York City. So if you want a New York City romance, here you go. Um, so Clark and Audrey have been best friends for quite a long time. And I think Clark wants to get his mother or an ex, either one. I think both, off of his back. And so he asks Audrey to be his fake fiance um, in order to get them off his back because he just wants to be left alone. And so she agrees to this through them being in a fake relationship together. They fall in love with one another. <laughs> they have to kind of like show PDA. So they have to like kiss in public. And like once they finally kiss for the first time, they're just like, whoa, what is going on? <laughs> And so they slowly start to realize that they actually have feelings for their best friend and it was so cute. Then I have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is about Marcus and April and this one's really interesting with the friends to lovers because they don't know that they're friends. So um, Marcus is like this big actor on this very popular TV show that is very much like Game of Thrones and April is a fan fiction writer for this show like she loves to write fan fiction about this show and Marcus has a secret identity online. He also writes fan fiction online because he doesn't like the way that the show is taking his character and the show in general until so he writes fan fiction about it. If anyone were to find out about it, he could get fired. So no one knows about it except for himself. For the past couple years, him and April have been best friends online and they don't know who the other person is like in real life. April one day decides to uh, post a cosplay of herself as one of the characters. She's a curvier woman and so she kind of gets bullied online because she doesn't look exactly like the character that the TV show has on it. And so Marcus as himself, as the actor, realizes this, realizes that this woman is being basically bullied and he loves her cosplay, he loves what she's doing. And so he asks her out on a date, not knowing that that is his online friend. Once they go on a date together, he kind of realizes who this woman is and he has to figure out whether or not he should tell her his secret identity, basically. I love fan fiction stories and romances centered around fan fiction. And I felt like this was just so well done. I just loved these two characters and I really saw myself in April at points. And that's just so amazing. And I thought this was a great twist kind of on the friends to lovers trope. Then I have Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I haven't read this book in a very long time, but I still think about it all the time. So this is about Josh and Hazel and they were actually kind of like acquaintances or friends when they were in college. And then it's years later and they come across one another all over again. And they, they form this friendship. They start to hang out with one another be friends with one another and then they decide to set each other up on dates with somebody that they know and then go on double dates with people however instead of going home with their respective dates they always end up spending time with one another at the end of the night not in like that kind of way but like they'll end up watching a movie together they'll end up leaving their dates to go eat dinner somewhere or just go play with hazel's pets or something like that like they never end the night with the date that they're supposed to. They always end up 
at the end of the night with each other. And of course this grows into something more than just friendship. This was just so sweet. I love Hazel. Like I, she's like me. <laughs> I really saw myself in her and like, oh, her romance with Josh is just so swoony. And when they finally get together, it is just electric. It is fantastic. Then I have a Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen. This is a hockey ish hockey ish romance none of the characters play hockey but they the two main characters work for a hockey team so nate the hero of this story actually owns the brooklyn bruisers hockey team and becca is his assistant now for years nate has been swooning over becca he has before he did have feelings for her he was actually uh married and they were pretty close friends. Like they've been friends for years, even though she is his assistant, they've been really close, really close friends. And then once um, things fall through with his wife and they get a divorce, he realizes how in love he is <laughs> with Becca. Like he is infatuated with her and she is oblivious to it. And she just thinks they're really close friends. She ends up getting injured in one of the previous Brooklyn Bruisers books. And um, Nate ends up telling her like, you're staying at my house in order to recuperate because she has a concussion. Through them having to like spend like time together, they're forced to, or she's forced to realize that she might have more than just friendship feelings for Nate. And Nate is finally able to confess his feelings for her. And oh, this is good. You don't need to read the other books in the Brooklyn Bruiser series to understand this or get it. You might, they might add a little bit of context. I think I read this one not reading the previous books and I still loved it. I then have Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is about Macy and Elliot and every summer they would spend time together. They're basically like summer best friends and it grew into actual best friends as they grew older. Macy's uh, vacation house is right next door to Elliot's like permanent house with his family and so every summer she would travel to her summer house with her dad and spend the summer with Elliot. This book however takes place in two different time periods so each chapter like flip-flops to then and now. Now Elliot and Macy are not friends anymore. They do not know where the other person is in life. They don't spend time with one another. They don't see each other at all. They don't communicate at all. One of the first chapters of this book is about present day Macy and Elliot bumping into each other one day and them having to realize that they are in love with this person. <laughs> and they're also heartbroken that they're not friends anymore. Like both of them are very heartbroken that they're not friends anymore. And you realize throughout the story why they stopped being friends. It's a roller coaster of a book, y'all. One of the things I loved about this book is it's very unique in the fact that you really get to see these two grow in the childhood friends to more because a lot of childhood friends to lovers romances it just gets mentioned that they were childhood friends. They don't actually show on page how these, how the characters grow from childhood friends to lovers. I love how you get to see in here, these two like meet, they get to become like acquaintances, then it grows to friends. And then as they get into their teen years, it grows into infatuation and love, first love and oh my word. This was so good. I think Christina Lauren does really great at friends to lovers romances and I want them to write more friends to lovers. Lastly, I have, I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. <laughs> this is an alien romance and it is also a marriage of convenience or like kind of like arranged marriage romance. So Susan in here, she needs to move away from the planet that she's on. She doesn't want to be there anymore. And so she enlists in this like bride program and she gets sent to Alex's planet. Alex is going to get married to her to hopefully better his people. So Susan is kind of like thrust into this new world, new culture, new people. No one looks like her, no one acts like her, and she's trying to basically like survive on this planet with Alex. Their marriage is very much a friends to lovers. It's like Radiance right here, my baby. It really reminds me of Radiance. They have to get married first and then they are very polite and kind and friendly to one another. It grows into friendship the more they talk to one another and then they fall in love with one another. They fall in love with each other's personalities and it's so beautiful. <laughs> um, don't let the cover fool you. This book is good. This book is so sweet. Like it is so sweet. It is so worth the read. So there you have it. Those are 10 Friends to Lovers romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.